Hello, welcome back to Vivintech. In the previous video, we have created a lookup activity which will return a list of records in JSON format as output. Now, we will pass the output of this lookup activity to a for each activity. The for each activity takes the input from a list of objects from the previous steps. Here, the previous step is the lookup activity, and let's see the output of this lookup activity here. As you can see here, the output contains the count and the values. But I want to pass only the values to the for each activity. I can do this by providing an expression to the items property in the settings section of the for each activity. Let me show you how. Under iteration and conditionals, we have the for each activity. Drag and drop the for each activity. And let's connect these two activities and select the for each activity. As I said, under settings section, we will pass the output of this lookup activity to the items property here. Click here and add dynamic content. Select the activity outputs. And as I shown you earlier, we have the count and the values as output of this lookup activity. But I want to use the only values. So I'll give dot value here, which will return only the values of the output of this lookup activity. Now we are good with this items property. Let's go to the activities window so that we can create the main copy data activity. Click on edit. Now get the copy data activity under move and transform section. Just for your information, I do have a source database link set, but I don't have a source data set. So I'll create a new data set for source. Click on add new, SQL, Azure SQL database. Click on continue. And I will name it as underscore data set, or I'll give it as sales underscore data set. That is more good looking and I'll select my link service and I will not provide the table name because I want to copy multiple tables. So I will provide the dynamic properties so that it will get the table names automatically from the lookup activity output. Click on OK. Now open the data set. We will provide the dynamic parameters by declaring them here in the data set. Add new. One parameter is table schema, which we need to get. The other one is table name. So we have initialized two parameters. One is table schema and the other one is table name. And click on edit here so that we can provide the table schema and table name parameters. Actually, we will be initializing the table schema and table name parameters here. Click on add dynamic content. And as we have declared the parameters earlier, we will use the table schema first. And we initialize table schema. Now we will initialize table name. Click on table name. Click on finish. So we have initialized both the parameters. Now Let's come to the main pipeline. Now we will initialize the table schema and table name parameters by using a item function. So to retrieve the data in each and every iteration, we will use an item function that will return the data corresponding to each and every iteration. For example, during the first iteration, the item function will return the data corresponding to the first record. Similarly, for the corresponding iterations, it will retrieve the second and third records. Let's come to Azure portal and implement that. Click here and click on add dynamic content. So we will give an item function here. Item dot Add 
row contains or record contains the column names table schema and table name which we require so we'll use we'll give it as item dot table schema and item dot table name as the values to the parameters so item dot table underscore schema click on finish and click on add dynamic content at the rate item dot table name so this item function will get the table schema and the table name from the json output that we have linked from lookup activity to the for each activity now let's go to the sync and let's create a new link service for sync data set click here and my sync will be azure blob click on azure blob storage and i will select the delimited text click on continue now i'll give my data set name as blob underscore sync that is fine now i'll create a new link service and uh, i'll provide my subscription and the storage account details here and my storage account is sales store and i'll test my connection it got succeeded yeah i'll create the link service and here also i will not provide the file path where the file needs to be created instead i'll provide the dynamic parameters so that the file will be created in a particular folder for each and every table so for now let's click on okay and go to the data set of sync data set here also like source i will create a parameter one is the file name that i want to queue at the destination and the other one is the blob file location which is the folder name actually so i will name it as blob folder name that is good so let's sorry i gave the name as name that is fine so we have initialized two parameters one is file name and the other one is blob folder name now let's go to connection and initialize the values for this so here you can give it as uh, before giving the file path here let's go to our storage account once so this is our storage account and let's check the container name go to containers and our container name is sales and i don't have any files i guess yeah i don't have any files in place so i will give the path as sales slash uh, i'll name it as something like uh, file drops that is fine i guess yeah and later i want to create a sub directory so that each and every table will be copy copied into a individual folder for example i i want to copy orders data set to an orders folder customers data set to a customers folder so this blob location will give the folder name and i think you got how you you will use this blob for uh, blob underscore location as a parameter i think you're correct so we'll provide by using the item function click on add dynamic content sorry uh, here itself we will give the blob folder name actually when we are assigning the value then we will give the item function and we will give the file name click on finish so we are good here now let's assign the values blob folder name and the file name in the actual pipeline here in sync we have the values in place now we will give the i uh, file name and blob folder name using the item function con add enemy content at the rate item dot i want the file name to have an extension actually with csv format so let me do one thing before giving the item function directly i'll use a concatenate function 
uh, which will concatenate the table i mean uh, the file name with a dot csv string so i'll use, do it like this under string functions i have concat yeah i selected concat and now i will provide my table name by using the item function item dot table name that is fine sorry and give the name yeah that is fine now i'll add this with a dot csv extension so i'll give it like comma dot csv so click on finish that is fine i guess and i'll give the blob folder name by using the item function as you know at the rate item dot and my column name is blob underscore location item dot blob underscore location so that is it we are good here just to confirm you can go to user properties you can click on auto generate which will give the properties that you have sorry parameters that you have defined so we are good so the source will be the table name and the destination will be in sales container under file drops folder something like that so i think we are good here and let's publish it so that we can try running it so it is publishing click on publish so we are good here this will take a couple of moments to publish yeah i think it is published i guess yeah it's published so let's run the pipeline so that we can check if everything is perfect or not click on okay let's go to monitor let's refresh here also let's also refresh here so that we can see any data it is in progress let's click on here okay skewed okay it started the lookup activity is complete let's see the output of the lookup activity here so we got perfectly it is fine now let's refresh it once again so that we can check if yeah the copy data for two tables is complete i guess let's refresh it once again yeah it says it's got succeeded now let's come here let's refresh here so we are good we got the files so if you can see here we got the files loaded into individual folders okay you can also customize by giving the date uh, inside each and every folder uh, by using uh, the internal parameters here i'll show you in uh, some other lecture so that you can learn a bit more so that's it guys that's it for this video uh, in the next lecture we will learn how to create a event based trigger uh, which will trigger another pipeline once a blob file is created that's it for this video guys thank you for watching please leave a comment if you have any doubts thank you